Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Zidi, walking and talking the beautiful beach here in Phuket, Thailand. Yes, today's video, amazing Bitcoin charts. It's six amazing Bitcoin charts. Of course, also giving a trading tip, of course, also a travel tip, talking about some life advice, and yes, talking about the news. A beautiful video, completely full with beautiful information, guys. So, yes, watch the video till the end and start start this beautiful day with some positiveness and that positiveness is giving us a thumbs up before i even start talking because today again a beautiful bitcoin booty beach now let's quickly jump into the first part of the video the charts the first chart today guys of course that beautiful four hour chart again look how beautiful that buy signal there led into that a massive long all the way up to that 44k level that i told you like four days ago i think three four days ago i told you guys if you step into this long the target is 44k and where did we go exactly even higher 44,226 us dollar that was the top of the wick at the moment around 43,590. very beautiful again pushing towards that 44k level guys as you understand that 44k level is a massive area of resistance guys look to the right that beautiful volume over there there's a massive volume around that level so there's a lot of sell and buy orders but we need to break that level to keep continue this beautiful bullish move all the way up to 48k guys so it's very exciting week ahead are we gonna break that 44k level yes or no let me know down below in the comments guys now i'm gonna jump into some amazing charts guys that will show you the bigger picture of cryptocurrency in the hole at the moment this is the first chart guys the year to date market cap performance so if we're looking at the market cut of the best performing layer one blockchains then we can see for example that ethereum year to date peak performance is plus 96 percent plus 96 percent guys if you look at the altcoin sector peak year to date performance is also plus 92 percent guys beautiful now, if you look to Bitcoin at the moment, year to day, it's plus 172%. Plus 172%. That is exactly why I'm telling you guys that first part of the bull market, you should be in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to lead. And if that spot ETF will be approved, Bitcoin is even going to outperform all these other assets way more. And yes, after that, the second part of the bull market, when Bitcoin starts to stabilize, that is when these altcoins have an option of running or outpacing Bitcoin. But at the moment, there is no way they will do that. And you can see this data exactly here now on this beautiful chart. If you would have been in Bitcoin from the beginning of this year, you would have been up with 172%. Ethereum, 96%, and all the other alts combined, 92%. That's how simple it is. Then we have this chart, recovering from a Bitcoin bear confluence summary. We can see that every time the same things happen. If you look to the left on the chart, you can see the 2019 to 20 uncertain recovery phase, where nobody is certain Bitcoin is going to go up again. Everyone is still like, maybe we will go down to 3K again. After we leave that phase, we will go in the post-March, that's like 2020, before the halving, into that um, enthusiastic, euphoric state of the bull market. And that is when Bitcoin goes up to that new all-time high. Now again, we can see exactly the same. 2023, January to October, very uncertain recovery phase. A lot of you thought we would go back to 12K. I told all of you 16K was the bottom. But again, all of you also listened to other influencers and they were calling 12K. Now, when we leave that phase, we can see what is happening now post-October enthusiastic uptrend and this uptrend will lead into the euphoria bull state again so this part is still a beautiful part to accumulate Bitcoin it's still an amazing level around 40k to be able to buy Bitcoin because we are at least going to double this price in this bull market you're going to double your capital in the next 12 to 18 months then we have this one the Bitcoin bull market correction drawdowns we can see every bull market had hit corrections the first one there the yellow then that red one then the blue one that's the 2071 that was the most beautiful bull market in my honest opinion because it had a lot of pumps and a lot of corrections in total i think six huge pumps and also six huge 30 percent plus corrections 
beautiful bull market. Now the last bull market that was the green one that had the double top that was a little bit like strange bull market because we had a huge COVID crash and the levels kept up going up and down and we didn't have a blow off top but a double distribution top. And now this bull market starts to look, in my honest opinion, like that 2015 to 71. It starts small with runs, pullbacks and probably going to lead in the huge blow off top again in the future. Beautiful chart. If you want to analyze it more, pause the video, guys. Then we have another beautiful, important chart. Because this chart is showing you exactly the strength of the long-term Bitcoin. Because look at those horizontal lines. The green, the purple, and now again the blue. These horizontal lines are the midpoint of those bull markets. So the midpoint of the 2017 to 19 bull market, that purple line, was the line that we filed as support and after that as resistance, and then when we broke it, the game became support. We never went below that midpoint again. Also the 2013 to 16 midpoint, the green line, completely on the left on the chart. When we broke that to go into the next bull market, we never came down below that green line again. In 2013, the level was $425. We never saw that level again. In 2018 to 20, that midline was 6K. We never saw that level again. At the moment, that midline is 30K. You know exactly what I'm going to say. We will never see that level again. That is how the Bitcoin price evolves every time again and again in a four year cycle. We will go to a new all time high and that will probably mean that we will never see that midline around 30K again. So I want to congratulate everyone out there that did listen to me and that bought Bitcoin below 30K because it might be never possible again to buy Bitcoin below that level again, ever. Very interesting chart. Then we have the inscription versus the monetary transaction kind. And this is a very important chart because I'm going to talk later in the video about this subject as well. We can see at the moment, the total transaction count is that yellowish line. Now, in the last couple of months, since January, we can see that the inscription transactions, the red ones, are increasing tremendously. A lot of ordinals, a lot of inscriptions, all of that is being done on the Bitcoin blockchain and it's leading into increasing transactions due to these inscriptions or ordinals. That blue line that you see in the bottom, that is just the normal transaction count of the Bitcoin transactions, financial transactions, monetary transaction count, like we call it. So it's very interesting to see that the normal transaction count is also approaching all-time highs, around 372.5K uh, transactions per day. That's a normal monetary transaction count. But we can also see that the inscription transactions are doubling that amount, guys. We are going up massively. Then we have this chart, the person supply of in profit, guys, a huge supply. And when there's in profit, we are talking almost 90% in profit, guys, 90%. Look at that beautiful red line, that horizontal one that we are now almost touching with that yellow line, that orange line, sorry, uh, upcoming, approaching 90% supply of in profit. If you look to the left, every time when we approach that 90% in profit level, that is exactly the moment, guys, uh, yes, that we are in that second phase of the bull market and that we are going even up steeply, guys, more higher than ever before. Before. Beautiful. Then we have the supply and profit yearly change. We can also see here that's a cycle. We go from that orange, uh, completely on the left, the 2015 bear floor, into the 2016 early bull, 2017 euphoria, that's a green area, and then of course 2018, that bear market again, guys. And then again, we get the 2019 bear recovery, 2020 early bull, 2021 euphoria, 2022 bear market. Now again, we are in that bear recovery phase into 2023. Yes, you could have gone in earlier, but you can still get in and do this phase to enjoy that early bull and that euphoria phase, the blue and the green phases that again will follow up. And yes, we will exit the market there in that bear market again in 2026. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. Yes, the charts always showing us the same. There's a lot of data on the blockchain and the data is telling us exactly where Bitcoin is going to go, guys. Because we can analyze the previous cycles and these cycles are just showing us exactly, exactly, exactly what the target should be in this part of the bull market cycle. 
So those targets are not like in levels, in heights, like 160K or 200K, but the targets where we should go in the RSI, the targets when a certain amount of Bitcoins are in profit, et cetera, et cetera. All that data collected in the blockchain, beautiful, always represented by Glassnode. So yes, I hope you really enjoy the charts. Always zoom out, buy a shit load of Bitcoin is my advice. As much as Bitcoin possible before the halving 2024, because after that halving, we will see this massive run and you will be leaning back or maybe walking on the beach and enjoying that euphoric feeling that we always have in that second part of the bull market of Bitcoin going to new all-time highs. It's just an amazing feeling, guys, and I want you to be there with me. Now, let's jump into the trading tip. For the trading tip today, again, a chart pattern, guys. The chart pattern for today is an ascending triangle and a descending triangle, guys. These ascending and descending triangles are a continuation of the market in the direction that the triangle is taking place. The thing, how you recognize an ascending or a descending triangle is that the top line of an ascending triangle is a horizontal line. It's a line of resistance. All these candles are hitting that line of resistance every time and again and again. And that other line, the bottom line, is a sloping line upwards. So you form this ascending triangle and the price is moving in between this triangle. So we come from the below, guys, in this beautiful bull market. Then we have this horizontal line that is the resistance. And we have that sloping up line, which is the support. And then we break out mostly the amount of the pole again. So yes, you can put that pole on top of the ascending triangle and, we, and you will see what the target is. A descending triangle, guys, is exactly the opposite. That's in a downtrend. And then we have a bottom line that is forming, or again, horizontal, that's forming uh, the support. And we have a sloping downwards line and the price starts to be moving in between those two lines again. And then when it reaches that last part of the triangle, that is when we break out and mostly in a descending triangle, yes, we break out to the downside. And again, the same length of that pole, paste it there and you will see the target of that downwards move. I think I need to turn around because I can't see my own face very clearly on the camera now. Maybe the sun is shining like too directly into the camera. But that was the trading tip for today, guys. The ascending and the descending triangle. Yes, turning around for the travel tip. The travel tip for today is a very simple one. Maybe I think it's a simple one and most people maybe even don't know those companies that you could use if you need a taxi. Because in most countries, you are used to Uber. The Uber is this beautiful service that you have an app on your telephone. And if you need a taxi, you click, I need a taxi. You will see the taxi arriving exactly where it is, a couple of minutes away from you mostly. And then you jump into the taxi and it will directly drive you to the destination. And yes, of course, the payment is all done online. They should, by the way, start to accept Bitcoin, which would make it even more easy for Bitcoin families like me to travel. But at the moment, you need to use your debit cards, your Bitcoin debit cards. Now, so in Asia, for example, they don't have Uber. Here they have, for example, Bolt or Grab or InDrive. These three apps like Bolt, Grab and InDrive are perfect apps to use when you travel in Asia. Because you always know for sure that a taxi will be there. If it will be a small economical taxi, a large XL taxi or even a van if you need it for bigger groups. And it will always drive you directly to the location that you pointed on at the map. Because do you know those situations when I was traveling when we were younger? and we need to use an app and then we didn't have an app and then we needed to point a taxi driver to a location somewhere in Vietnam uh, while he didn't speak any word of English, for example. These situations were like really, oh my God, he doesn't understand where I wanna go and then you need to do Google Translate. Oh no, that was not existing by then yet. So you need to try with a book. At that time, you were still traveling with the Lonely Planet, like this kind of a thick book that had all the guidance on a, on a country. And then there were maps in the book and you need to point on the map, for example. So that is how we communicated with taxi drivers when we were younger, guys. But nowadays, you have these beautiful apps, Grab, Bolt, all of them. You just select the destination, the taxi driver will pick you up. You can exactly see how many minutes it will take for the taxi driver to arrive. And from that moment, bam, it will be going automatically from your debit card balance. Also Bolt and all the others, and my honest opinion, should start accepting Bitcoin, guys. I, st I still don't understand why it's not like completely normal for these companies to integrate cryptocurrencies um, into their interface. Because there's a shitload of people that now, where they believe in cryptocurrencies, 
So why wouldn't they um, integrate that beautiful into their interfaces? A lot of people want to pay with Bitcoin. Yes. That's why I'm walking here on the Bitcoin booty beach, because all the people want to hear me speaking about Bitcoin blockchain in life and also want to start using these beautiful technologies um, uh, in a daily manner. For example, with paying taxis. I believe in China it's already possible, but there you need to pay with the Chinese central bank's digital currency, the digital yuan, but there you can already pay the taxi services. Uh, by the way, in China, for example, I think the taxi service there is called Didi. Yes. So if you want to grab a taxi service in China, you call a Didi. I would say calling a Didi would mean going all in into Bitcoin, selling your house, selling everything else that you own and go all in Bitcoin. That is what I call a pool a Didi, not calling a taxi in China. They copied me. Can I get some money back because they are using my name for their taxi service? I think I existed way earlier than the taxi service in China. I should put a claim there. You can't use my name as a taxi service. It's an all in move. Pull a Didi. <laughs> now guys, let's quickly jump now into the next part of the video. The next part guys is the news. Yes, in the news I read an article that a dozen of blockchains have been like broken or needed to stop for one hour or for two hours because of all the inscriptions happening now. And I want to use this beautiful article to show you exactly what is the difference between Bitcoin and all those other blockchains that most people refer to shitcoin blockchains. I'm not saying they are shitcoin blockchains, I'm saying what most people are saying. And now, in this moment, most people are right. Because there is a dozen of blockchains, all of these over here, that now were halted or had issues with transactions or had massive problems by even staying up and running because now people are using these blockchains as well to create inscriptions. So you all know that it all started with Bitcoin and in Bitcoin you could create ordinals, the NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain and inscriptions, that's like forms of text on the Bitcoin blockchain. Like registering a domain name, for example, I have ilove.sets. So people can send sets to that address, ilove.sets, and I will receive it in my beautiful wallet. So now these inscriptions are also being done on other blockchains. And because there is now a shitload of transactions on these other blockchains, because people are now making inscriptions on Ethereum-based blockchains or EVM blockchains, sidechains of Ethereum, these blockchains are getting clogged up and are experiencing huge issues, even stopping now sometimes. And that is exactly the difference between Bitcoin and all those blockchains. In Bitcoins, also millions of inscriptions are being done million dollar worth of fees are being created. Highest fees ever. Because the Bitcoin blockchain is completely full with people creating ordinals and inscriptions. It doesn't stop. It keeps up and running. Yes, the transactions will be a little bit slower, up to 10 minutes sometimes, or maybe 20 minutes even, if it is in the second block. But it's still up and running. It's not breaking down. It doesn't experience any other issues than the normal issues during a bull market. Now all these other blockchains, we are just getting started and they already can't handle all these transactions because of the inscriptions, NFTs, and the normal transactions on that blockchain. And that is the difference between Bitcoin and all those other chains. Bitcoin is very stable. Bitcoin is very trustable. Bitcoin is really a very strong build it blockchain. We can't say that of all these over here that now experience a shitload of problems already because some people decided to create inscriptions on those Ethereum or EVM based blockchains. That is the difference. And that is why more and more and more guys will be built on the Bitcoin blockchain or any second layers of that blockchain because it's just the best blockchain out there. Yes, it might be a little bit expensive sometimes. Yes, it might be a little bit slow sometimes. But I prefer slow and expensive and very stable above fast, unstable, and even the crashing down because of a few inscriptions being made on that blockchain, guys. So that's very important for you guys to understand that there's a huge difference between Bitcoin blockchain and all these other blockchains. And yes, we should be able to create inscriptions or ordinals or anything else on these blockchain guys. Okay? 
beautiful news article. The link will down below the video. So if you want to read that article for yourself, then uh, you can always read the article for yourself. A very beautiful dog just took a bath in the sea. Our dog never goes in the sea. I don't know why, but this dog over here, that one, there he is. Yes, that one is going into the sea. Yeah, he likes salty water. Now let's jump into the next part. The next part, guys, is answering the question of one of the followers. And one of the followers asked, Didi, how will World War III affect Bitcoin? Now, a very good question, because is this already World War III? What we are experiencing now in Israel and in Ukraine? Or is this just the start of a huge world war that's going to break out? We don't know. Is there even ever going to be a World War III? I don't know, you know. But if I look at wars, then it's always the same thing happening. The moment a war starts, there's the moment that the rich people start to hedge their capital into safe store of values. They won't stay in dollars, they won't stay in euros, they won't stay in any other fiat currency. They will start to hedge their capital into safe store of values, like for example, traditionally gold, silver or any other beautiful metals and now i think bitcoin is going to take over all of that part of investments and there's a very simple reason why i believe that bitcoin is taking over that gold that silver and all the other store of values look for example real estate not that very safe when you have a war you know because real estate can be destroyed and then bam it's gone and maybe your insurance will cover a little bit, but mostly they have this small letter that they say, in a war or a big tropical storm, ah, we don't refund. So real estate, not very safe when there is a World War III. Gold was very safe, but yeah, it's not very simple to move it around all over the world. Now Bitcoin, which is like a thousand times better than gold, which is the gold of the 21st century, you can take it with you all over the world. So in these times of war, for example, the war Russia or Ukraine, we could see that most people were not able to escape Ukraine. And why not? Because their money was in the banks and those banks were closed down. They were not working. So people didn't have access to their own money. They couldn't because there were no people, employees, like changing the numbers on the bank accounts or giving them access in the ATMs. So they couldn't even take a train or a taxi or a flight outside of Ukraine. The people with cryptocurrency could. The people with Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, they could pay those taxi drivers or those other transportation services to drive them to Poland. And in Poland, they could exchange their Bitcoins again into that Polish money and then use it over there and live their life happily after. That was the first time in the war that Bitcoin is performing 10,000 times better than fiat or physical gold. Just imagine you having hatched your capital all in gold and then the war breaks out and then you need to escape to another country. Are you, how, how are you going to bring that bag of gold with you? You can't travel with more than $50,000 or euro outside of your country because they will stop you at the airport. Oh, you cannot travel with so many kilos of gold. You can't transport it. That's not safe in times of war because, yeah, it will be confiscated somewhere at some control. So that physical gold is losing its value, in my honest opinion. Why would I still invest in it? I can't carry it with me. So for the next World War III, guys, if that is even going to happen, I believe Bitcoin is the most scarce asset out there that you can take with you in a very flexible way. Just memorizing your seed phrase is enough. You don't need a paper, you, do, you don't need a fancy hardware wallet, you just need to memorize your seed phrase. You travel to another country and there you import your seed phrase in your telephone or in a hardware wallet and bam, your bitcoins are back. So yes, if you're asking me, Didi, is bitcoin going to crash because there is a World War III? My answer is definitely no. Bitcoin is bigger than any world war. Bitcoin is exactly that perfect store of value hedge, the 21st century gold that people will use to escape that war, that people will use to take their capital to the next country where they can safely live ever after. Because that's the most simple way to move your capital from here to there 
without being able to be confiscated. And that is what investors and rich people always start to understand. That that gold of the 21st century is really 10,000 times better than that physical gold that you can't carry anywhere. And even if you can carry it somewhere, how are you going to scrap a gram of gold out of that brick to pay the butcher? It's impossible, man. It's like living in the 60s, in the 50s. Yes, gold was popular. But Bitcoin is the new futuristic gold, guys, that we can use as well. We can divide it into sets, the smallest domination. Pay anything that we want, everywhere that we want, without anyone being able to stop us. That is why Bitcoin is the best performing asset out there, because more and more people start to understand that. And yes, a lot of them will invest in Bitcoin with a spot ETF, but I'm here to tell you that the only safe way to store your Bitcoins so that you will always be able to do with it whatever you want is to store your Bitcoins in a self-custodial hardware wallet. You need to have self-custody on your Bitcoins. The moment you buy a spot ETF, the custody will be at BlackRock or the custody will be at the bank or any other financial institution that is giving you that spot ETF. But you don't have direct access. When there is a World War III, guys, yes, the access to the spot ETFs, in my honest opinion, will also stop existing, just like the access to the banks. The access to your self-custodial Bitcoins will never stop because you have them in self-custody. That's the biggest difference between having Bitcoins on an exchange or having Bitcoins on your self-custody. Sorry, yes, my eyes started to do this because there was a blonde uh, walking past by me. <laughs> I probably have, don't have her on camera for you guys, so very sorry for that as well. But maybe I can show you it like this. Look, empty beach almost, beautiful, sun's coming up. It's amazing. <laughs> I could have a worse job. That's very offending me turning your camera around for a blonde. You have a wife, stop that. <laughs> so that's my answer on uh, that question about war and Bitcoins. Bitcoin is gonna save you when it comes to wars. If you want to store your capital in any safe way to protect it from any World War III breaking out, then the only safe way to store your capital at the moment is Bitcoin because you will be able to travel all over the world bring your family in safety and still live the life that you were always living because your capital bitcoin is always with you that's the solution invest in bitcoin now let's jump into the next part for the next part turning around because i need to go that direction again the next part of course is the inspirational part guys and the inspirational part today is you need to believe in yourself on those moments that no one else is believing you. That's very important in life. No matter what situation, you need to believe in yourself, especially when no one else does. And why? Because you're the only one that knows exactly how strong you are. You're the only one that really feels what you need to feel. All those outsiders, all those other people can't look inside you. They can't feel what you're feeling. They don't know your strength. They will only be there to point you on your weaknesses, which are probably a reflection of their own weaknesses because they can't even know your real weaknesses if you never share them with them. So you always need to believe in yourself. Just trust everything that you do that is good. Just feel what you want to do and then start to do it. If you start to believe in yourself more and more and more, you will achieve all those goals that you have set for yourself. Because believing in yourself is 10 times more stronger than millions of people believing in you. Because even if millions of people believe in you, but you don't believe in yourself, you will never achieve those goals. There's another friend again. <laughs> Goedemorgen. <laughs> Ik had je helemaal niet gezien. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Um, so that's very important. It's very important. Just think of it. I will believe in you. Millions of other people will believe in you. But the moment you don't believe in yourself, do you think you will succeed in achieving all those goals? I don't think so. I think you will have huge issues with achieving these goals the moment you don't believe in yourself. So first thing of all is to start to believe in yourself. And the moment you will start to believe in yourself, everything else will happen. The lesson for today is never lose the belief in yourself because that's the strongest tool 
that you have. And if you're like in a dip, in a downward cycle, you don't believe anything, you don't believe yourself anymore, if you find yourself in that situation, start to fool yourself. Just tell yourself every day, again and again and again, I can do it, I am stronger, I am the best, I believe in myself. I've done it a million times before. Just fool your own mind. Just fool your own brain. Sometimes you are in these negative situations. You can't control that. But you can try to reverse it. And to reverse the situation, you need to start think positive. Yes, I can do it. Yes, I am the best. No, I'm even better. No, I'm the best of the universe, etc. You just fool your brain. Train your brain to think positive again. And you will find yourself again becoming more positive and positive and positive. At the end, even believing in yourself again. Finding your true strength again. And then again, yes, bam, everything will go up in positivity. That was the last part of the video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about everything else? Uh, what do you think, of course, as well about believing in yourself? I wish you an amazing day and hopefully see you tomorrow. And hopefully there won't be a World War III. But if there will be a World War III, buy Bitcoin. Always a lot of dogs on the beach in the morning. They love the beach, guys. They love the beach. There, Teddy is also here. Now, that's not Teddy, but he looks like Teddy.